Hello there guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to be talking about something a bit different to what I usually do, actually um, quite different, uh, and that is anxiety. Um, so I think this is a more and more common issue um, in today's day and age. Um, a lot of people, men and women um, can have anxiety issues um, and I think that it's important to raise awareness of it and also help people who have got anxiety because it's something that I experienced myself um, and I have had for two years and it's possible to resolve those issues in the moment and they get less and less as you become, uh, you have more tools in order to um, help yourself. So I'm going to be giving five tips today um, on how to resolve your anxiety in the moment um, or to help. Um, and also want to give a disclaimer that I'm not a medical professional or and I've not helped anyone with uh, mental health um, difficulties in the past. Um, so this is just my advice for um, for you based on my own experience with um, anxiety um, and how I've helped myself over the last two years to get better and better. So um, tip number one is to have the mindset in knowing that you that the anxiety is not going to last forever. So on average, anxiety uh, is basically it's an adrenaline thing. Uh, it's when adrenaline goes into your body and it's a fight or flight syndrome where you're actually, which we've been, which has been um, put into us over the period of years when we used to have to run away from predators, um, but now we have no predators. We're running, we're trying to run away from something, but our mind doesn't have anything to run away from and it still pumps that adrenaline into your body. Um, so, but the adrenaline can only last for a certain period of time. So it's that stress trigger um, that, that comes out and it can only last for a certain period of time. So knowing that it's only gonna last for on average up to 50 minutes really helped me to understand that um, I can just sit this out and wait it out and I know I'm gonna be fine at the end of it so there's nothing to worry about. Um, so it's, it may be easier said than done, um, but when, you, when you're in the moment and you sit and you go, wait a minute, this isn't gonna actually be forever. I'm not gonna feel like this forever. I know that it's going to last me, say, 30 minutes or 50 minutes. And that actually <clears throat> helps to calm you down, gets you in the right mindset to become coming out of that situation. And um, it really helped me to understand um, that I didn't have to be in control um, of my feelings and I would just be able to sit and wait it out and um, it would go away eventually. And Knowing that makes you feel a lot calmer because when you're actually in the moment you have anxiety attacks, sometimes you can have panic attacks and you can black out and things like that. And, um, <clears throat> and, it, and that will really help to calm you down or help to calm me down. So, um, so number two, like I said just then, is, is knowing that you're not in control of your feelings all the time. So you've got your, your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. And you can program your conscious mind, unconscious mind, through your conscious mind. Um, but it doesn't happen immediately. Um, and, and knowing that you're not in control of your feelings all the time can help you to relax at the same time. And relaxing is basically the key to slowing your heart rate, getting yourself feel less stressed, um, and, and getting back into a normal kind of state of, of mind. So, um, and one of the reasons why I think that I personally have that that helps me is because in my life I've been in control of a lot of things. I can do a lot of things. I can build houses. I can um, figure things out just from googling them and and doing them. And because I feel a lot in control of a lot of things like my health and um, and the way that I do things in my life, um, it, when you have some issue with your mental health that you don't understand yet, um, you try to control it. And that control is actually like a cycle of decline because when you feel out of control, you feel, how can I control this? But then you're out of control, so how can I control it? But I'm out of control. And it's just a cycle. Um, and so it makes you more and more anxious because you're like, why can't I control this? And so if you understand that you can't be in control of your feelings the whole time, you're actually unconsciously controlling it, um, which, which makes you feel more relaxed. Um, so it's a different kind of mindset um, and that for me was a big thing um, and that, I learned that from CBT training. I went to a, 
is cognitive behavioral therapy. So if you're having long-term issues with this, you really should um, go to a cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy session with someone, even if you have to pay, pay for just a couple. I only went to a couple and I got some tools to then help myself feel a bit better. So um, I stopped going to them and after two years now, I'm feeling better on a day-to-day -day basis and I'm feeling much better about myself. Um, the first time I had a panic attack, I thought I was going to die. I was saying goodbye to my family um, and my, my vision was blacking out and couldn't see anything. Um, and then surprisingly, after about 30 seconds, I was like, oh, I'm okay. Why did that happen? And it's just the, it's just the mindset that you go through when you're having anxiety. Um, so yeah, it's a strange thing, but I'm going to say that's tip number two. So tip number one is you you know that it's not gonna last forever. On, the, on average, it lasts for 50 minutes. Uh, fear and anxiety last for 50 minutes. Even if it's not a conscious fear, it's just a fear that your body unconsciously has. Um, but you can program that out of yourself. Um, and number two is that you're not in control of your feelings all the time. Number three is get yourself into a relaxing, relaxing posture. Um, and one of the main things that I do is that, for example, if I feel anxious, I lower my shoulders and I set, set my head just like on top of my shoulders, just rest my, my neck. And when you, when you put yourself in a relaxing posture like that, it, it helps to subliminally, subliminally <laughs> unconsciously, sorry, um, subliminally um, calm yourself down because you are you're you're setting yourself in a physical position to relax but that's something you're used to for relaxing so it it basically relaxes your unconscious mind as well in my opinion uh, and that's what's worked for me so i relax my shoulders just maintain breathing and then it really sets you up to calm down um, and get rid of that anxious feeling or at least take the edge off the anxiety like i said you're not going to feel instantly better from any of these these things so like it can take up to 15 20 minutes maybe even the whole you'll have to ride the whole course out of the period out that you're feeling anxious and you have that adrenaline inside you sometimes it's just like a trigger and it just it won't stop and it will just go until you've run out of that adrenaline and your heart rate slows down so don't expect any of these things to be an instant fix but they'll definitely in my opinion, these things have helped me. Um, so um, you'll be on your way to having more tools to help your anxiety. So that's tip number two, get yourself in a relaxing position, whatever that is for yourself. Um, things that you, postures you put yourself in to feel more relaxed, sometimes just leaning up against a, um, a wall or sit down and just lean against something and just rest. Sometimes that can be difficult in the workplace to so find somewhere if like, go out of the room where no one else is watching and, and sort of just find your relaxing place and um, try to reduce that anxiety. So um, that's tip number three. Tip number two, uh, it's number four, sorry, is to always maintain your breathing. Never stop, notice your breathing and make sure that you continue to breathe at a regular rate and that you breathe in you can breathe in deeply and do breathing training. That's sometimes that's a good distraction from anxiety. Um, but just maintain, make sure that you're all breathing in a normal amount and normal amount out. Just keep breathing. Because you know that if you, it's also another mindset thing. If you keep breathing, there's no way that you're, you're going to start um, blacking out or getting these, un, these weird sensations in your body. Sometimes when you have an anxiety attack, like I said the first time I had a panic attack and I started losing my vision, my arms were losing their feelings and I, I just thought my body was shutting down and I was gonna die. But it's not the case. Um, it's basically what happened there was my, I was breathing less and less. Basically, the, um, my breathing was becoming shorter and shorter so I'd be going. And I wasn't breathing enough for my brain and my body to get the oxygen to it, to um, to work function properly. And so, if you even I know it's difficult. It feels like you're breathing in through like a paper bag and you're hyperventilating. But 
if you force yourself to breathe, there's no way that anything can happen to you because you are, you're gonna get that oxygen to your body and you're gonna feel okay. So it might feel stressful and difficult to breathe, but there's no reason why you will, will black out or have any of these weird feelings uh, for any longer than they should last. Um, if you just continue breathing normally in a, in a deep, you can, you can try over breathing like in a deep fashion and go holding your breath and then breathing out. But I've just found that breathing normally and forcing it because it, it will be a struggle sometimes um, will help you to stay um, awake and help you to get through that very stressful period. Um, sometimes I've actually had a panic attack while driving um, because I've had coffee or something. Actually, co caffeine should be an additional one, um, but I'll talk about that in another video. Um, but caffeine is a real big stress increaser. So I don't have any caffeine anymore um, because like I said, this time I had, um, I was sleepy when I was driving and I had some coffee. I actually started having a panic attack on the motorway, but I just maintained my breathing and then stopped at the next town and then sat in the car and waited, it, waited for it to go away. Um, so, yeah, avoid coffee, uh, avoid caffeine in any sort, any shape or form. Um, but that's not one of my main tips, that's just an additional thing. So uh, maintaining your breathing is, is a number one priority, um, but mindset I think is the, the main resounding thing that I would say out of this whole um, set of five tips, um, because mindset is the thing that will get you through long term in resolving your anxiety and having the tools ready for you uh, for when you feel anxious again. So tip number five, um, and this is a bit of a trick, um, is that when I actually got anxiety, it was in November time, and it was coming up to that time of year where it was getting colder and colder. And I actually found that um, by standing outside in the cold and shivering, it removed my anxiety almost immediately, sometimes. <clears throat> Because what it's doing is it's distracting your body away from that unconscious thought that you're in a fearful situation because you have to now shiver. And so sometimes people, also in the CBT lessons, they, they said it was a good thing that I did it. Not to, not to get yourself so cold that you're going to get hyper, hypothermia or whatever. But what I mean is just to start yourself from shiver, start yourself shivering and breathing, breathing fresh air. And it will distract your body from, um, from its current unconscious fear. Um, and I say unconscious fear because when you think of anxiety, sometimes you might think, um, like for example, you're you're scared of spiders, but this then that may trigger anxiety for you, even if you know the spider's not going to harm you. It might may trigger anxiety, but what I mean is an unconscious, an unconscious stress that you can't, you don't have immediate control over. That you need to try and distract your unconscious mind from. Um, and that's what I'm describing anxiety as because I myself, um, right now I have some palpitations um, and anxiety and that's why I'm making this video because I want to help people. But am I scared of anything? There's nothing in this room to be scared of. Um, but I still have that unconscious anxiety in my head somewhere creating, causing a physiological, physiological problem um, I say problem, a physiological, physiological change in my body that I notice as anxiety. But I notice it as anxiety and I know that it's not going to last forever and that it's, it happens, it's happened more than once now and I've lived through it and I'm okay. So, so getting yourself, distracting yourself from that is a very important thing. And, um, and so my trick, for example, um, is to go out into the cold, make yourself shiver, Another thing that in the CBT lessons they mentioned is to um, try food that you don't like and makes you cringe because that can distract you also. Or try food that you really like that's like really delicious and um, that can also distract your mind from the current um, um, anxiety that you're feeling. Um, so those are my tips. Um, I'm actually going to be, I think I'm gonna be doing more videos on this because I've got, um, I've had, now anxiety for two years and I'm thinking of starting a podcast um, talking about mental health um, because I've had the several people in my family and people that I know that have had mental health problems um, and issues that they've gotten through. Um, I've, I've never taken 
any medication for anxiety or depression or any sort of thing. I've just done it through um, um, reading online, what the things that you can do, going to therapy um, and just figuring it out over the course of two years. Um, and I really think that it's helpful to people to share this kind of toolbox and knowledge. Um, and I really want to help people who have anxiety issues because I've talked through with a lot of different people what they can do when they have anxiety, but just not on in a public space. Uh, and it's really helped them. So hopefully it's been helpful to you. Um, if you think this is something you'd be more interested in, I know that you guys that watch are not um, here for this subject. Um, but if it's something that you suffer from or know someone who does, uh, please share the video with them because I think it will be helpful. I really, really do. Um, and if you've just found this video because you have had anxiety or had an anxiety attack or want to help yourself um, in the future uh, from having an anxious situation, then please do subscribe because I'm going to be doing a lot more content on this. Um, and um, I think that it's an important subject and um, I'm going to continue talking about it. So thank you very much for watching. Um, drop a like if you like it because some more people will see it. It will go up to the top of the results when people search it on Google and YouTube. And, um, and if you found it helpful, it will help other people. So um, thank you very much for watching and I hope you get through and make sure you listen to the tips. Um, don't do anything drastic um, and just sit and wait it out. Just, it's just a case of changing that mindset, like I said. Um, I've had anxiety for two years now. First time I had it, I had a panic attack and I thought I was gonna die. And uh, it's, I'm still here, aren't I? No one who's had anxiety has ever died from anxiety. Um, so it's, it's, it's all good, it's all gravy, and you're gonna be okay. So thanks for watching, see you soon.